what triggered my mind yesterday was like, oh, you like hit like a girl and you throw like a girl and you da 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 like a girl, like it's a negative thing. And it's like, I was literally just born with a vagina. Yeah. And then you're just placing these negative stereotypes on me because I have a vagina and therefore I'm a girl. So yeah. that's the that's the part where it's like, there should be a bit of a choice there as to like, if you really identify with the stereotypes of being a girl, which are inherently negative in our society, which is horrific. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new, listen to this or you're not new and you haven't followed us, give us a follow on Spotify, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We're also streaming full video episodes on YouTube, y'all, so you can watch these videos wherever you watch, TV, phone, tablet. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, link is in the description below. Today, our guest is a singer, musician, artist, cat connoisseur and social worker you can find them at jay george on tiktok please welcome my friend jay what's up hey 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 dude it's so fun to have you on i feel like i have like talked to you about having you on for like months now it's been like months i feel honored i'm so happy to have you on the first tiktok i ever saw of yours was the one that went super viral when you were like singing in your closet or was it a closet or was the door was closed and you were like you couldn't see yourself singing yeah i was indeed in the shower um that was definitely staged but it ended up working well so we'll pretend it was like totally on stage but it was staged if you stage it right then it can look really natural you yeah, know? I mean, I, I think the, the ones that do well are the ones that like, I mean, I, I was singing and then it just so happened that we were like, let's record it. And then we were like, let's do it a million times to make sure it's perfect. So <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> well, it did look effortless. And that's, I feel like TikTok likes that effortless, like, ooh, like, let me catch something, you know? Yeah, I was working on that riff for like a really long time because I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. And then I did it. And I was like, you know what? And it was already going viral, like that riff was going viral. And I was like, let's yeah. do it. And then it was funny because that that video actually went off. And then like people were saying that it wasn't me, that it was like I had like just lip synced over it. And so that kind of like caused a lot of drama, but it was funny. Haters was- going to hate. They're going to be like, that is a you. <laughs> Haters going to hate. <laughs> you, it you, it could have been you literally just end the camera singing and someone be like, that's not you, pussy. <laughs> Literally, literally. I'm like, you know what? People are going to be 14 and angry, so I'm down for it. <laughs> You're lip singing that. You got that off the internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because somebody else did the same exact like riff and I did it like, I guess, kind of similarly. So I took it as a compliment because I'm like, this bitch goes off. Like, mm-hmm. I'm down for that. So I'll take it. Hell yeah. Super fun to have you on. Besides the fact that you do a lot of um singing videos and shit like that like you also post a lot about like being queer um your non-binary identity and your identity as a lesbian Mm -hmm. like tell me a little bit about like your journey with figuring out your gender identity yeah so it was definitely a journey it still is I feel like it's going to be kind of a lifelong thing to be honest um I had a thought that non-binary had to be a certain way and I felt like I couldn't fit into it because of what I knew from just like social media yeah. and like what those people looked like. And so I was like, okay, if I don't look like that, then how can I be that? Um, yeah. But I knew that I felt like I didn't feel exactly just like a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt that way like my whole life. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I know that I feel very fluid about like my gender and I know that I feel androgynous. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> And I was like, I can't be non-binary because I thought non-binary was just like, you are they, them, you do not attach yourself to any gender whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And like, that was it. It's very, I thought it was very black and white. And so I actually did like a lot. And this was like within the last year, I would say a lot of just like studying on my own of just like reading articles and like reading what other people have gone through. And I'm like, oh shit, like these these labels like fit, I guess labels fit what I feel. And so that was all under the non-binary umbrella. And so I don't think enough people talk about the fact that it's an umbrella term and it's not just mm-hmm. one thing. Yeah. Um, and that's what like, I was like, oh my God, this is so relieving that like, okay, non-binary doesn't just mean one thing. Like I, I actually like fit into this. And outside of that too, like I use fluid now, like very openly because it does change kind of like depending on 
the day or the season or the hour, honestly, where I feel like, okay, like, that's why my, like, you know, my, how I dress is very, like, different depending on the day or the week, because I'm like, okay, sometimes I feel like, a, like, my womanhood is, like, dominant today, or, you know, mm-hmm. tomorrow I might feel like my masculine side is more dominant, so it's very fluid, and I feel like that still fits under the non-binary umbrella um, of being, like, gender fluid, so, um, that has really been within the last like year that I felt like gotcha. that's what's up. That's what's going on. You're like, it's a big yeah. enough umbrella. Holy shit. It's a, it's a two Literally. X. <laughs> yes. Yes. And there's like so many cool like documents out there that show like the entire umbrella and like what goes into it. And like, there's so much to it that I'm like, anybody can really like find their way within the umbrella that doesn't feel like they're just within like the boy or the girl binary, right? Like the blue or the pink. So yeah, I think it's yeah. really cool that there are so many subcultures within the LGBTQ plus community and so many things like that I don't know. Like there's certain things that I just like have no yeah. clue about. Like like when you're saying umbrella, I'm like, okay, there's like gender queer and there's like gender fluid. And then I know there's other things that I forget mm-hmm. that are like fall under the umbrella. Like similarly to how people use the word queer a lot of the times and it can mean yep. your sexuality, but it can also mean your gender expression. And it's just like an overarching term. Um, which I think it's cool. Everyone yeah. has, yeah. there's like, it's, it gets more detailed and detailed as you kind of funnel down, which is really neat. Yeah. And like you bringing up queer is something that like, I always <laughs> also was like, I don't know if I fit into that. Cause I don't really know, like, I don't really vibe with that. And I think that's what's mm-hmm. kind of cool about labels is like, you can find one that fits you for like that kind of part of your journey of exploring. But then mm-hmm. later on, you might feel like something else is a better fit and that's okay. I don't think enough people like understand or are comfortable enough with being like one label fit me then and another one fits me now or it doesn't fit me at all or I don't need one at all. Yeah. Um, like that's kind of like where I'm at with it now. It's like, I don't really need one in order to feel valid. I'm just an alien. <laughs> <laughs> I never really like hit any, maybe I did and I didn't realize it, but I feel like I wasn't hiding like gay stuff for my parents just because like I mean a my dad is super liberal so like he didn't really give a fuck when I came out to him but like and my mom is a little bit more on like the like religious or side not really but like she just has like a catholic upbringing but like I never was like oh my god they can't know that I like looked at that I have to like hide that like I I guess I feel very blessed that I didn't have to do those things but I think in my head there's so much like internalized homophobia like within myself that I'm yeah. like we can't I can't think about that. <laughs> oh, so still, like you restricted like still yourself. Now, I'm like, <laughs> oh, still now, yeah. yeah. Man, still it's now a journey. Sometimes. I'm like, come on. It is a journey. I think it it's journey. a big journey. I notice it sometimes when I'm like, come on, nobody's here. Like, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my whole year when I first came out was dealing with internalized homophobia. And like, I was in a relationship. A so yeah, it was really nice to like have a support during that time that just kind of happened at like, it all happened at the same time. So it was kind of nice to like yeah. have that. And I got through all my shit with her. <laughs> bless her fucking heart. I literally had like a very similar experience. Like my first girlfriend, like bless her heart because I went through that whole thing. Yeah. So much internalized homophobia with that. Cause I'm like, can I be doing this with you? Like, is this okay? <laughs> And it's funny because like she had been out for like not too too long but she was out like before me just hadn't really dated but she was like out yeah. so she was like a step ahead of me so she could same, like help same. me and i didn't also didn't have any queer friends i had one i had one queer friend but she we kind of have a bro relationship we don't talk about feelings we never have since we were like eight so like she didn't really have a lot to say on the on the subject matter she was just there sure. as a support. So I was like, okay, well, I need someone who's like in, in the know, in the culture. Like she was just kind of out on the sure. outskirts, like didn't give two fucks. And I'm like, that's great. But like, right. I need someone who fucking knows what's going on. And then I ended up yeah. being in a relationship with someone who kind of had queer friends and was like a queer person, obviously. And like, it was, it was nice to have that, but not everyone gets to have that support when they come out because everyone's journeys are different. Right. And are you speaking on like more high school time? Well, this was when I came out. So this was like after, this was like post-college. Got it, got it. Right after okay. college is when yeah. I came out. Um, yeah, but I started watching so. The L Word. I came out to myself in college and I started watching The L Word by myself in secret my junior year. Um, That'll do it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that really did it. I never That's once enough. thought that I was like, oh, everyone does, like, straight people hide that they're watching gay shit. Why would they want people to think they're gay? It's so bad. It's had such a bad connotation. So like everyone does this in secret. <laughs> 
Yes, I think we all had our like one guilty pleasure that was like, that's a dead giveaway that something's going on. <laughs> yeah, I literally called it like a guilt. It was like in my compartmentalized in my mind is like a guilty pleasure. Like, okay, now mm-hmm. I'm going to like think about women and like now I'm going to like look up like women kissing and making out and I'm going to look up lesbian porn and I'm going to look up the L yes. word and and if I see a queer character I'm gonna obsess over them in a in a TV series and I'm oh, gonna like 100%. watch all the clips on YouTube and that's fine because yeah. I just like really admire them I just admire them I just like like that that they're doing that for them like what yeah. like and I just yeah. want them to like lick my pussy what that's weird <laughs> okay mine was that like my dad okay so my dad used to work for the playboy club that's just a side note and so I grew up like around like scandal occasionally there would be like playboy magazines in my home which is like a whole nother story but like I would like hoard them and then look through them (laughs) and then recycle them thinking that it was like all right we're just gonna stash the evidence away like it never happened but it was totally like a whole like habitual thing for me. And um, that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> okay, so your dad, so you were the daughter of Hugh Hefner, basically? Yes. Uh, no, oh no. God. He was just a bartender for the for the club, yeah. Okay, well. But it was the club in Wisconsin, so like that is not that exciting. It's like. If I were you, I would cool, tell my but... friends that he was high up and Hugh Hef's, Hugh Hef's uh, social circle. That shit's cool. I should have probably hyped it up more. Yeah, my dad is Hugh Hefner. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My dad, I mean, I don't even think about like, like, cause like, I don't think of my parents as like, I don't think anyone thinks of their parents as sexual beings. Obviously they are, but like to think of my dad I'm having like- hardest not to. <laughs> yeah, to think of him having like magazines and shit, just like, I just don't see him doing it. Like he's so goofy. He's so, they're so conservative when it comes to sex. You know, but like, it's funny. Like, oh, sure. My dad's a total hill jack. Like he just doesn't like he's, you know, curses and he does whatever. And it's like, and he can be crass, you know, but like when it comes to that stuff, so right. conservative, like doesn't like piercings or tattoos yeah. or we anything like that. It. He'll call me a fucking dickweed, but yeah. he like won't talk sex, any anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so funny. No. It's so no. weird. My, it's so <laughs> my dad is the same way. <clears throat> It's just then they just so happen to be playboys everywhere. And I'm like, okay, all right. So what do you want me to do with that? Like, <laughs> so cool. But yeah, they are they are pretty conservative with that. So yeah. That's my childhood in a nutshell. I'm learning so much about you. Yes, it's great. <laughs> You're like, and now it's time for me to leave. <laughs> I'm like, I just spilled all the beans. You're welcome. Here's my childhood trauma. <laughs> Two emotionally unavailable bitches just trying to do a podcast. Honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that was the realest thing I've ever heard. (laughs) Two avoidant people trying to be less avoidant to make some some entertaining content. (laughs) Yep, that's it. Thank you. Oh my God. That's my attachment issues. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. I think it's really fun. I think attachment issues are really interesting. I like didn't know about them. They're fascinating. They are. And it's like, I don't know how I didn't because like, it's so portrayed in the media. Like someone chases Mm -hmm. and someone's like, chase me. And the other person's like, I want to chase to feel worthy. And the other person's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like so nuts. Mm -hmm. And like, I never thought of it in such a logical term of like an attachment theory. And so I saw it and I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I have been levels of avoidant like my whole life. Like I yeah. was like, like when I dated men, I basically was a robot. Like I had no emotion. I was so unempathetic, sure. just in general, not even just dating, but just like, I think I was just so unempathetic in general from just trauma and just like trust issues and stuff. And like, I never yeah. let anybody in. Nobody, no, my friends, like I didn't have a soul to tell. I had no confidant whatsoever. I was like, braving it, lone wolf on my own. No, don't need anyone. Like I'm fucking going That's to literally the me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Legit. Yep. And uh, yep. I compartmentalized everything. I was really bad with my emotions. And then I came out and like suddenly the floodgates, I don't know what happened to me, but I, the floodgates opened. I, I went off birth control. I think that helped a lot. Cause I was like less, I felt like everything. And then I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, what do I do with yeah. all these emotions? I, I don't know how to yeah. regulate them. Like, 
Um, I have a very similar experience. Yeah. I mean, I feel like being on, I was on birth control like since I was 16 because I had acne. And when I went off, I had like a similar experience where it's like, it was everything was like so like robotic and like regulated but I would like push mm-hmm. everything down and then now it's like therapy is such a godsend like I'm really sifting through all this stuff and yeah yeah I went, on, babe. I went on birth control for my acne too I think honestly I think like because I was not having sex then but I think it was just a nice way for my mom to like not say have to like have any talks about it so it's just like I'm putting you on birth yep. control because I know you're like going to use it and you're not going to get pregnant you're going to like she trusted me she didn't trust my sister on it. so she didn't put her on it she was like I'm afraid she's like gonna think she could skip days and like get pregnant but like you're fine and I'm like okay well I'm fine because I'm gay and I won't be having sex but thank you <laughs> she like already knew she was like you're fine oh my god yeah but like it did it it cleared up my acne it was wonderful I was on it for most of my adolescence and it wasn't until I was starting to have issues like, oh my God, nobody talks about the issues of birth control. Like I started, I don't know if it was just your body is now different than it was when you were 16, but like I started having like legit depression three days out of the month that I couldn't get out of bed for like no reason. It was Do you cyclical. think it was birth control related? Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of because it was only mm. like three days, yeah. three or four days out of a month. And mm-hmm. so I literally was on vacation, yeah, I mean, it's, but I was like, couldn't get out of bed. It's not normal to have like kids doing that. Yeah. It's not normal to have, like we're, we're like thinking back on it being 16 and being on birth control it's just like kind of crazy like that that was kind of the first I mean this is getting all like science related now but like I'm going to a dermatologist and then being like that's the best option like yeah it helps but then it also like hinders a lot of other things so yeah like and they don't tell balance, you about but, that and I didn't realize yeah. the stuff the shit I was missing nope. out on I didn't realize the sex drive I was missing out on like motherfucker I went off of that thing and like within a few days, I was like, how do people function? Okay, but were you with girls after you got off of it? Um, I was or already like guys. out. Well, let me see. I was because I was like, maybe it was just being with women that was helpful for you. <laughs> also, also true. But mm-hmm. I hadn't I hadn't slept with a, a woman yet when I went off birth control. I was like coming out still. And so okay. it was part of like, I guess it just kind of came into my coming out process. But like, sure. Yeah, I, I definitely was independent of, of that because I wasn't, I hadn't started dating yet. Um, so okay, I think it was physiological, fair. but it, yes, I think yes. it was also in the mindset where I was like out to myself. And so I was like, yeah, Ooh, yeah. Um, but yep. like, damn, I didn't realize how much it suppressed that shit, which was crazy. And like, literally my acne returned, it like sprouted. And then it, it's been like pretty not it has not been an issue since. So I'm yeah, like, why the like fuck it's not chronic. can I stay on this so long? Yeah, I would not put my child on birth control. <laughs> no, I would not either. I mean, the only good part of it was the fact that I like knew exactly the, the moment I was going to get my period was the only good mm. part was like, this is literally clockwork now. And now I'm like, when is it coming? But like, that's really not a big deal. Like I can deal without being on drugs. Yeah, completely. Yeah. But yeah, it was a big, it was a big thing for me. And then like, I, so I, I think I still am avoidant regardless of if I'm on birth control or not, but like it definitely, I definitely saw a shift though. Like I definitely saw a shift in, in my emotions and stuff like that. But I also had to learn how to like deal with them. Cause I like basically was, yeah. that was a big portion of being able to like deal with it. And then now I had all this shit that I had to deal with and I had like no safeguards. And so I was just like flailing. Yeah. <laughs> But like, like from the ground zero now, oh, <laughs> like yeah. coping skills have to be built. Yeah. 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 But I think theory, I think a, attachment theories are really interesting. Cause like, I haven't been the same one. Like I, I remember, I think I am always going to be mildly avoidant, but like, I went from like being super avoidant, like toxic avoidant to like on the other side, I went from avoidant to like, what's the other one? Anxious. And then I mm-hmm. went back to like secure, which I'm like right here. I'm still mildly avoidant. I'm not gonna say I'm like perfect, but like it took me from like one point all the way to the other point, polar opposite to get to like a yeah. good place. Sure. But if you did were you do that on your own or did you have support like a therapist or did you do that soul searching on your own? Um, when I was in therapy, we didn't talk about attachment styles. It was for other things, but I literally like, I follow so many people like millennial therapists and like so many people who really talk about attachment theory. 
um, and TikTok. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds terrible, but like I've learned a lot through that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, if you had a gun to my head and you were like, you either have to be codependent until you die or run, I'd run. Oh, I'm a runner. <laughs> I'm a runner. <laughs> that always, in, yeah. Yeah. So I like to say I'm after. like flighty, which is like the nicer way to say it. But like, when I feel like I'm in danger, I'm just like, I Misty, can't say any longer. Flaky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good to That's know. That's when though. I start to feel things. <laughs> it's good to know though it really is and yeah. it's good to know like why you know like I didn't realize why you know I was like why mm-hmm. do I do this and, like, yes yes the that. why is so important and that yeah. yeah god bless my therapist I know man. seriously <laughs> I like had to I literally did a deep search and I like did a lot of like journaling on it and stuff like that and like because like they I feel like I grew up thinking that it was like you needed to be needless and independent and pick mm-hmm. yourself up by your bootstraps. You you don't yep. ask for help ever, yep. even if you're yep. on your deathbed. You know, yep. and I'm so that's how I grew up thinking. Yeah, like you yep. don't. I don't need anyone. Yep. I can handle it on my own. And like, yeah, yeah. And that's what I thought was the epitome of strength. Yeah. Then. And so if you fall short of that, you're a weak motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Or like, if you do ask for help, it's always going to like not be beneficial or like they won't be there for you. Like yeah. there's never going to be like a strong bridge between the two things, but so it's a fully but surely I am learning it is helpful. <laughs> it's yeah. very helpful to have yeah. a healthy sport. Yeah. I feel like it's yeah. so hard too. like when, when people are avoiding it, like when I would ask for help, I was like on death, not de- actual death doorstep, but like, I was like out of options. Like I was like desperate and like yeah. my pleas for help were like rejected, which is like the worst thing ever, because it's like, you're already in such a vulnerable position. Like you already feel like a piece of shit for asking for help. <laughs> and then you yeah. get rejected and you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. And you're like, okay, I don't want to do that again. Like, why yeah. would you want to do that again? If it was harmful the first time. So I get yeah. it. I, yeah. 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 I've seen a lot of people start to put like she, they in their bios. And I didn't know if it was because I like I thought about it. Like I thought about putting she, they because I was like, I don't really care if anyone calls me they, them. Like, I think it's fine. Like, it wouldn't be weird for people to call me they, them. But I'm also not like, yeah, fucking do it, you know. So I'm like, should I really put it there? And I, I ultimately was like, nah, like that just isn't something that I would think of. The only reason I'm thinking of it is because other people are now doing it. I feel like it's becoming you a trend, but I wanted to get your yeah. thoughts on it because I'm like, I don't even know if that's politically correct to call it a trend. Cause I, cause it's like, you know, the whole thing is like more and more people are coming out as gay. Like there's more gay people. And it's like, there's always been gay people, just more people are now like feel good to come out. So I'm like, yeah. is it just more people now feel like it's acceptable to put she, they, or are people doing it just because other people are doing it? I think there's always going to be people that are following what other people do. Like, I think there's always going to be the issue of like modeling behaviors. Yeah. And like, to a certain extent, that's not like a bad thing. But I do think it's a lot of what you just said of like, more, more people are coming out because it's safer to do so. And I mm-hmm. think that comes with sexuality and gender. Like, I think we were born thinking it was only a binary of like male and female you know, gender is boy and girl and there's nothing in between. And so like, I think the more that people are coming out and there's more things written about it and there's more knowledge around it, people are feeling safer to be like exploring it more. Um, And I've seen actually like just with some of my like queer friends and just like people that I've seen, like you can experiment with using pronouns and like see how it feels for you. So like, I remember when I was dabbling and like maybe using they with my she, they pronouns, like this was like maybe last year, um, like a couple of my like queer friends were kind of like one night we were drinking and they were like, just only like using they, them for me and like seeing how mm-hmm. I was feeling. And I was like, this feels really great. Like it's really, it's catering to like my side of being like pretty like gender neutral on like the, the you know, seasons that I feel that way. Um, and so it really feels validating in that way. Like, that's kind of why I decided like, that's a really good choice for me because I do feel more fluid in my gender expression. Like some days I'm like, she is fine, but other days I'm just like, okay, well, it's really nice when people sprinkle in a they, them for me as well. So, um, to me, it's kind of like, let's just put a little bit of dash in there. And I feel like pretty validated. So when my friends do it, I'm like, this is, this is really nice. I always tell them like, 
that feels so good when you do that because it just feels very validating to my gender expression yeah because it's not just so binary woman you know gotcha um but I think a lot of it is like experimentation just like you know when you're figuring out your sexuality it's the same way where it's like I don't really know what label is going to suit me so let's try it out let's try it on and if it feels good it feels good you know I think that's awesome. I was thinking about like the whole like womanhood thing too, because I mean, there are times where I feel more womanly than I do other times. I never feel manly though. Like I'm never like, I never feel manly. I would consider it, I guess, masculine, but I, and I find it really interesting. Like I've tried, like I've had so much like time on my hands working from home to like kind of track it, but I typically do feel like more masculine, like when I'm ovulating and I find that so interesting. And I think it's cause hmm. testosterone, I'm going to get real biological here, but that like, is so yeah, scientific. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like increase the testosterone, right? Like increase in like wanting to have sex, increase in libido. And I'm sure. now presenting more masculine. Like, is there a connection between the two? Cause like they, they, I mean, all of these aren't like very like peer reviewed studies, but like the studies that they have done on like people who are gay versus trans versus straight is like when you're trans, like your brain is given more hormones. So like, if you're a trans man, like your brain looks the same as like a cis man and a gay man. And like the same for like a trans woman, you, your brain looks the same as a cis woman and a gay woman, but like for just being like gay versus straight or whatever, like they say you get a little more hormones, like not as much as like trans people do, but like you get a little more testosterone, you get a, you know, if you're gay, you get a little more estrogen, like just like a dabble. A good stash. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah, I'm I like, and I could see that happening for sure. I think that there's been some studies about links of like women who have had PCOS or thyroid issues or some type of hormone issues, um, having more like queer children, which I find really interesting because my mom has thyroid issues. Like she just, yeah. Like she had hormone issues and like, I had an ex ex who her mom had hormone issues. Wow. I'm just saying the more, you know, (laughs) things are right. You're like, yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm hearing you on that. Yeah. I think, I I think like on this, on this note too, I feel like, and this might be a totally different tangent, but I feel like with a lot of my gender expression comes from like me being more comfortable with my clothing and like what I choose to wear has like really helped me and like being comfortable with like okay, like my gender doesn't have to be just girl. Like I don't have to, Mm -hmm. and I don't even like, I don't even really like that in my vocabulary anymore. Um, Just because I don't like really resonate with it. But um, the more comfortable I felt with like, I don't need to wear something that like society is telling me I'm supposed to wear has Mm -hmm. been so helpful and like opening a door to like, not only my gender expression, but my sexuality as well. Um, Because not, I don't have to like attract what I want just based off of what I'm wearing. So there's a lot of like freeing aspects of like being comfortable with what you're, and I'm sure you can resonate with that too, of like what Mm -hmm. your, your fashion is and what you're choosing to put on your body is very reflective of how you feel. Yeah. On the inside. It really is. It really is. And, and something that I had came to the realization, like just during just seeing more people put she, they, and like thinking about like, do, should I put it? Do I feel like, if someone called me they, would I like it? Would I be neutral to it? Would I dislike it? I would never dislike it because it's such a, you know, everyone says they, them when they're talking about someone in a certain instance, regardless, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like, it's very neutral for me, but it's not like anything that I'm like, hey, or anything like that. And so I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I put it there, but I got really high one day and I started thinking about, you know, the constructs of masculinity and femininity and how it doesn't exist. And like, it's, but it's hard to not use the terms because how else are you going to like talk about it? But I'm like, yeah, I mean, it it is constructs at the end of the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, At the end of the day it is. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I was thinking about that and I was like, what is womanhood? Like, I feel like I'm womanly and I feel like a woman and I'm cool with that. But like, what is it? Like, what is, what is, what, 
what is it that I'm identifying with that is strictly womanhood or strictly feminine? Is there, you know, something that's feminine, but it's not womanly. It's something that's womanly, but it's not feminine. Like I was so like in another fucking dimension thinking of it. And then I started thinking of this book that I used to read, A Brave New World. If you've ever read it, it's like a futuristic book that was like, nope. okay, well, um, it was like a utopian society. And I was like, okay, well, let's say we live in a utopian society it's a clean slate and everyone's born like non-binary. Everyone's born like gender neutral, like in every way mm-hmm. possible, they, them, and then they get to choose if they decide to go by he, him, they, them, you know, she, they, he, they, whatever. Would yeah. I change to be she, her? Would I decide to go from non-binary when I feel so strongly feminine that I would change my pronouns and I don't know if I would. I don't know if I feel strongly enough if I, if everyone's a clean slate, that I would be like, you know what? I am she, her, and I need to change it. And I need to come out as a, as a woman. I don't know if I would. I really yeah. don't think it's that strong. Like now that I'm here, I'm like, you know what? Like, it doesn't seem like I feel fine. I feel comfortable. I've never had any problems. But yeah. like, if it was on the other side, I don't know if I would. I think that's a really cool perspective though. Right? Like, because we are taught at birth, really. And I kind of, I just made a TikTok about it because I saw it in an episode of The Simpsons and I was like, Burp. that like gender, I mean, everything, everything is gendered and it's all language. It's all, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's all language. And there are some languages that are like more heavily gendered than we are. And yeah. I couldn't imagine how conflicting that is as well. Like Spanish is like so incredibly the gendered. lows and the laws and the outs. Yeah, it's so. Gendered. I'm like, and what's the point? Like, really, there's no point. Um, random words. Yeah. Random words sometimes, like mm-hmm. La Playa, like the beach is feminine. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, but even like, I mean, even in English too, it's like we have like, okay, we have like the women's basketball team, and then we just have the basketball team, you know, and it's yeah. like. Oh, you know, and what, what triggered my mind yesterday was like, oh, you like hit like a girl and you throw like a girl and you da 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 like a girl, like it's a negative thing. And it's like, I was literally just born with a vagina. Yeah. And then you're just placing these negative stereotypes on me because I have a vagina and therefore I'm a girl. So yeah. that's the, that's the part where it's like, there should be a bit of a choice there as to like, if you really identify with the stereotypes of being a girl, which are inherently negative in our society or yeah Mm -hmm. I mean in general which is horrific but yeah I was thinking about that a lot yesterday and it's like I think that there are more like woke parents that are you know coming out of the woodworks now that are like in our generation where they're not instilling this like boy girl gendered and they still are doing these like gender reveal parties which I'm like like like, (laughs) my baby has a penis like it's like okay I like want to do one. Um, I want to do one just to fuck with people. Like I want to do one for all of my like yeah. cis friends. Like I want it to be as basic as fuck and then turn out to be the most <laughs> neutral thing ever. Like I want it to come out fucking burnt orange or like fucking red. And they're like, what Amazing. is it? Yeah. You know, instead of pink and pink and uh, pink and what is it? Pink and blue. <laughs> pink and blue comes out purple. Blue. <laughs> comes out fucking purple and yeah. everyone's like oh and then it's like what, what? is that <laughs> and i'm like ah, ha, ha. <laughs> that's what i would just do. like make it a fucking rainbow because it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter no. and you don't know what they're gonna really like resonate with until they're old enough to decide for themselves and like to have that identity for themselves so it's just crazy how like we are just kind of born into a gendered society and that's kind of like I think I noticed that the most when I was like dating men where I was so repulsed by the fact that it was so incredibly gendered and it still mm-hmm. happens in the lesbian community too and like the gay community, oh, yeah. which also makes me feel a little bit ill, but like, especially in like heteronormative relationships, it's like there is such a gendered aura in those relationships oh, and it's yeah. so uncomfortable. And I remember that was the thing that I was like, I can't pretend like I'm a girl anymore because I'm not playing those roles right like I yeah. I can't do it it yep. doesn't feel right for me and so I was like like not dating men allowed me to explore that so much more mm-hmm. not to like shit on men but like it was just giving me an avenue to <clears throat> explore myself a bit more without any sort of like societal pressure to be a certain way 
So I'm not having that like instilled like you know there's like this, these shitty stereotypes of just like oh like girls always do this in the in straight relationships girls always do that and men complain about them mm-hmm. and I'd always like think like what is that all about like I I can't hang and I can never could and then I like once I was like out and I was like with women or I was single or whatever it just gave me so much more of like an opportunity to be like hey I don't have to abide by any of this yeah because it's construct yeah I feel the same way have you seen I don't know if you watch any SNL but did you ever see like the Kristen Stewart like the Totino's uh commercial the SNL skit I don't think so oh my god okay so it's really funny it's like you know a spoof of like the Tostitos commercials where like the big game is on the football game and the women are in the kitchen making snacks for the boys and like the boys aren't really paying attention but they still are like demanding like that there needs to be more food um oh maybe I wait maybe I did see that keep going keep going okay but anyways I don't want to I don't want to spoil it too much but basically Kristen Stewart's like the the sister of one of the boys and she ends Mm -hmm. up falling in love with the the wife and they end up like in this huge steamy makeout scene in the kitchen while like the guys can clearly see but they're not because they're so engrossed in the game and it's like the funniest shit I remember that yeah, so that was an older Old commercial, right? Like, it's, like it was. It's kind of older, right? It's yeah, kind of like it's like you know, like yeah. the toe. What is it? Um, just like you know, like the pizza rolls and shit like that have been around yeah, for a while. Rolls, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. like the skit's been around for a few years. Um, mm-hmm. but it's like so gendered. Like those things are so gendered, right? Like mom fixing yeah. shit for her boys, her hungry, hungry boys and hungry men. Whatever the fuck, like to watch them fucking sports game. Like, that's literally a perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's just, like, I don't understand, like, and it's, like, it's, it's great if you resonate with being, like, a woman in your womanhood, and, you know, I I still do to a certain extent as well, but that doesn't mean that it has to be, like, so negative, like, and so, like, specific, like, it's, like, okay, I don't, I don't have to play this role for you. I'm not, like, an actress. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. (laughs) Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And it's, like, almost, like, like, men are telling you how to like be and you're like Mm -hmm. okay cool yeah and this is like a whole nother tangent of just being like heteronormative behaviors but I think I noticed more of like how much I don't just in my day-to-day as well like I would feel uncomfortable trying to dress a certain way and then act a certain way because I was deemed as like being a girl and so I had to like you know, like when I was growing up my dad would yell at me if I like burped at the table but then if my brother did it it was fine, you know, yeah. like little things like that, where it's like, oh, yeah, two different like sides. It's, 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 I don't understand that. But I never had brothers. I only sorry, sorry, I only had a sister. And so my dad was literally the only guy in the house. Um, and like, I really had to fight to be to like do that shit, like burp the table, all that shit. Like, and it was I think for me, it felt like yeah. it was way past just manners and politeness. It was like, well, women women should be more polite and more mannered and like smile a lot. Yeah. And, like be mm-hmm. completely needless yeah. whenever possible. Yeah. Like, let's be physically dying before we ask for anything. And like, I just wasn't about that. And like, I literally yeah. am the one who burns the table and shit like that. And people don't say anything anymore. <laughs> and it's, and it's also yeah. just me just being crass, A, but also I think it was more of a acting out, um, you know, when I was younger. Yep. And, like, I have a very vivid memory of this. And this was, like, I mean, I was still in high school. So I was maybe, like, 17 or 18 at the time. And, like, I was in a fight with my dad. And my mom usually just gets out of it because my dad's very emotionally reactive and I like to provoke him. But then I also end up getting hurt at the end of being at the end of provoking Mm -hmm. and it always just kind of happened in that cycle and my mom had said something to me where she basically like I was like he's 20 you know he's 20 something years older than me like he should know better and she looked at me and she goes no you should know better and I was like I just like right there there, I was like I am held to a higher standard as someone who isn't fully developed done growing I'm held to a higher standard than like your my father I think your we husband gotta chat about our childhoods more Woo! Woo! <laughs> I, yeah I'm feeling it yeah it's a I'm vibe <laughs> yeah it's a vibe I I remember actually like now I'm thinking about the bachelor because they do a lot of this shit too 
And I like was like, creeping on somebody who's like um, one of the old Bachelor contestants, like from years ago or whatever. But I was looking at one of the pictures in it. Remember? Do you remember in Tasha's se- season where like they were they were doing that challenge of like a real like a real man challenge or whatever? I forgot what it was called, but they basically like had to like be able to hold a baby and like oh, do yeah. these things that were like normal human tasks. And they called yep. it like a, I think they called it a real man challenge or a grown man or something. Like like grown men it, can do feminine things, kind of thing. Like grown men can do feminine things, like have a baby and be able to cook while holding a baby and shit like that. Right. Yeah. Right. But it also to me was like you're getting a pass, like for a long time, just because you're a man or a boy, mm-hmm. and you get a pass because it's like oh, like you know, like boys will be boys until then. It's like okay, now you're like now you can be grown. And do these yeah. things that women have been doing for fucking centuries. Great. <laughs> yes, I watch the franchise because it's like, I love the trash. The trash makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> but it does promote such heteronormativity and very, like, toxic, actually, mm-hmm. heteronormativity. Um, and I know that franchise has gotten a lot of shit, not only from that, but also being very whitewashed and oh yeah, pretty racist, honestly. Um, yeah. And you can tell this season that they like got shit for it and they were like trying to pick up the slack. But I mean, whatever, I'm going to shit on The Bachelor, but it gives me a good excuse to drink um, on a Friday night. But <laughs> <laughs> but, <it's, laughs> but it, is, uh, it has its faults for sure. Just kidding. Um, I guess I probably should have an excuse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think like I always thought like, why isn't there a queer bachelor? Well, there isn't a queer bachelor because if we had one, people would be up in arms about the heteronormativity. We Literally. wouldn't be able to fit into the categories. We wouldn't be able to have a show Literally. like that. And if we did, it would cause nope. an outcry. There would be protests and shit because yep. it would it I could not see one that would work. Like I I see exhibit A. Literally. You got masks, hey mamas androgynous uh people butches like whatever studs and then over here you have femmes maybe tomboys maybe stems like they would totally would still like gender it? the whole thing it would still yeah. feel gendered you know yeah, like I, because of like what what consumers want to see yeah and yeah i feel like it would also still backfire but also like i feel like it would just backfire for other reasons <laughs> like not related to that but I mean, I would, you know, I saw that Bachelor in Paradise did that whole, like, I know they had, like, one bisexual on there, like, one mm-hmm. season. Um, and that was, like, a whole thing. And they still made it, like, I mean, they made that super hypersexualized, which is another Ugh. giant issue in the bisexual community. But, yeah, I mean, the whole franchise is a little warped, but. Yeah, but I think it's fun to watch from a perspective now that we are out of heteronormative culture. We don't have to watch those ideals so we can truly watch exactly. as pure entertainment of like, oh my Literally. God. Literally. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I don't yeah. have to deal with that. Like, I don't yeah. have to deal with that. And I think I never Ugh. watched it before because it never felt entertaining to me because I was still a participant in it that I hated. And now that I'm out of it. Literally, same. Now that I, and now I'm watching it. Like now I find it really funny and I yes. can pick apart and like find fun in all of it. And I don't get mad about it because I'm not a part of it anymore. Yep. I literally feel yeah. the exact same way. I never watched it like <clears throat> until I was like out and it was mildly triggering to me. Like, like if I thought about like watching it, then I was like, that's stupid. Like, I don't want to be a part of that. And now yeah. I'm like this is hilarious. <laughs> yep. Like, yeah, it's comedic. So I feel like I never watched it because I never saw yep. myself as any of the women. I never saw myself as any of the women. No. I would, And I would get mad. I feel no. like I was subconsciously mad that I couldn't wear a suit and I couldn't take a woman out and I couldn't, uh, I had to suppress all that masculine stuff. So I could never watch that shit because it always just pissed me yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but now I'm cool with yeah. it because I do, I can see myself like, I do not like this season. I don't like The Bachelor. I like The Bachelorette because it's all the men. And I know it sounds weird because like, why would I want to watch a bunch of men? But like, I see myself in them dating The Bachelorette. I don't see myself with these catty fucking women, which I fucking, this is a savage season, by the way. Savage, Matt's got his hands full. He does not seem like a guy that would handle that shit. He seems like a wholesome dude, you know? And like, those girls are on some shit. I've never seen 
like The Bachelor. I that's the you know the first time I watched it like like with with you know Tasha and Claire, and so I don't know if this is like normal. Yeah. Like this level of cattiness and bullying is normal, but like wow, they, wow, wow, wow. I feel like I notice it. Like you see the toxic masculinity so much when you're watching The Bachelorette, like, and that irritates me very much. But then you see like the other side of the toxic heteronormativity with the women so Mm -hmm. I feel like more and I see I totally agree with you that it's like now they're like being very they're using like slurs like slut and like whore and stuff and I'm like are we 12 like I don't understand what's going on but oh yeah yeah, I mean again it's very much promoting very negative stereotypes in relationships like I got a I had flashbacks to like high school when I was watching like the last Same. episode I know you haven't watched Same. it but like that you saw like I'm you oh, know oh. it basically tells you what goes on in the next episode with the whole like new girls yeah. and that everyone's pissed and the new girls are there and it's like first of all they came in what a week or two after you no I like are you that. really that I are you really that, that old wait I think we're on the, are we on the same one then I saw the one where they added new girls yeah, so this is just another, yeah. like, this is just, like, the culmination oh, of all of the bullying and shit. Oh, oh, So, great. like, some, some execution on Matt's end to get mm. to the bottom of it and stuff. Um, that's kind mm. of, like, it's just kind of opening up, like, how toxic the household is. Like, it is just, like, pulling people apart and, like, you know, ruining lives and shit like that. Like, it's bad. And, like, these are, like, grown-ass women. Yep. Also, why are there 23-year-old girls on this fucking show? Are they really ready for marriage? Are you really ready for Absolutely. marriage? Absolutely. You're not even Christian. Like, what is this? At least be Christian. Like, at least be, like, Mary Ann, 23. I've dated enough. I'm ready to meet my guy. Hopefully it's Well, at least, like, man. you have the... the- the bible to back you up like there's a reason why maybe you're doing that but yeah yeah I don't know and yeah I I think there also has to be the producers or the whatever whoever is like creating their storylines because obviously it's scripted to a certain extent but like they also are to blame to like like okay let me feed you this bullshit to say and to do just that just like it's all just for the consumer to feel like oh this is so exciting (laughs) and it's like no this is actually kind of bad um like yeah whenever I watch it I'm always like telling Kelsey like this is very problematic actually <laughs> like this is yeah funny yeah. for me but problematic <laughs> I, t- I will say that yeah. like the women really pit each other against one another more so than like the men like it, it all there's always toxic components but like I think I enjoyed it more because there was a lot more male camaraderie like with Claire and Tasha's, but with yeah. the other girls it is clicky it is mean they are not happy that other people are dating their person. And like, you see that with the men, like there's obviously there was conflict with like different dudes and shit like that. But like, yeah, I don't know, true. it rubs me the wrong way with women. Like it rubbed me the I wrong way you. seeing that. Like you should be championing women and you should be like, in your off time, obviously you're there for Matt, but like, why wouldn't you build friendships like while you're there or just be neutral and not do anything? Right, right. Like one of right. the two, like why the fuck? Right. And also, I'm like, from a person who's on a reality show, like, either you know you're not going to be Matt's person, so you're going to just try and get as much airtime as possible. And, like, you know what? Kudos to you for, like, that strategy if you know you're not in it for the long haul. But, like, if you're truly in it for the long haul, like, the people who are in it for the long haul do not do the toxic behaviors, aren't crazy. They last. Right. Those are the people who last. They get to the end. You can usually, like, pick them out. Yeah, you, you can really take them can. out from the beginning. Yeah. You really can. Like, yeah. I know the people who are going to last now on the episode. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know all the, the one way that you through, just but yeah, I mean, I'm pulling yeah. for Brie because yeah. that's me. So I'm pulling for her all the way. I don't know if she'll make it. I don't, I don't remember I don't which one that is. She's really pretty. I just feel um, like Katie. Katie. Katie is the one that seems like she is like, like the, Katie. she's become a, me- a mediator. Yeah. Katie's huge. She's an influencer. I looked her up. There's a lot of like good girls. I, I feel really like any favorites though. You don't. You don't even like. What about Serena? Like, nah. Serena's so cute. She's adorable. oh, Serena is. She, she's the one that went on a date with the donkeys, right? Is yeah. that her? Yeah, she's I adorable. like. I do like her. She's so young though. She's like 22. 
Really? Which is fine. Go go off. No, yeah, I think she's... I don't think she'll make it then. Um, <laughs> cut her, cut it off. You're like, nope. <laughs> I like Katie a lot. She's emotionally mature. She's like, she is. she's like kind of. I mean, she's in the drama, but not for the wrong reasons. Like, she's the only one that's like ballsy enough to like step up and be like, y'all are bad shit. Like, this is fucking yeah. dumb. Um, she's also really. She's like a. She's adorable. Yeah, and she brought very, like a dildo cute. to the first date. Like, that's cool. Like, you got it in my book. <laughs> yeah i i was just stalking her instagram actually and Me too. she was wearing a shirt that said like no fake orgasms or something like yeah. that and i was like go off like yeah. go off she's big on tiktok yeah, she's cute and uh the other i think blonde i prefer girl, the, the, go- the girl from chicago the blonde girl from chicago bitch oh yeah what is her name she hasn't seen the one that smiles weird yeah the one <laughs> She has straight teeth, but it's so like, like she's got like a <laughs> yeah. yeah. She like makes like very like un, unhappy faces. Yes. Yeah, it's like yes, a horse, yes. like a horse girl. Horse girls are a very specific type of girl, and you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like Miley Cyrus mouth, that was you amazing. know? Yes, you yes. know. She does I have a Miley, Miley Cyrus mouth. Cyrus. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's pretty. Obviously, no one goes on The Bachelor and they're not pretty. You know, like they have to be some sort of pretty, regardless if you think everyone's attractive or not, they are in their own right because they're on The Bachelor. Okay, might I add to this conversation that Miley Cyrus, I used to really like her and I still will dabble in her music. She said something really, did we talk about this already? No. She like said something stupid and then I, I canceled she her. Oh. I canceled her in my head. Yeah. Well, gay people? Because she's so, it, I mean, she's pan. So she's like in the community. I know. <sighs> okay, this is what happened. So she was, and people, like, she came out with an apology, and it was half-assed, and I was like, Pfft. but I, like, really, I really, like, used to like her a lot, actually. Um, and I, whatever, I still listen to her tunes sometimes, but she was on a live with her, like, now ex-boyfriend, I think. It was, like, that guy from Disney Channel or something. She was, like, dating some guy after she got not Liam divorced. or Okay. No, not Liam. Some blonde guy from Disney Channel. Okay. Forgot his name. Um, he looks like Aaron Carter, kind of, but not Aaron Carter. Oh, like um, the Silverstein so, anyway. or Shel- uh, not Shel Silverstein. Um, <laughs> Sterling Silver, Sterling something. That guy. Maybe. I think he had like a normal, like boy, traditional boy name, but I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know his name, but. If you saw him, you probably would recognize him. Anyway, she was on a live with him. She was, like, dating him after Liam. And she was talking about being gay or whatever. And then she was just, like... And this was, like, on a live. So people were, like, hearing it. And she was, like, she was like, you know what, you guys? You don't have to be gay. You just have to find the right dick. And she said she was joking. But the, and then he, like, laughed. And she's, like, no, I'm serious. You just, like, have to find the right dick. And I'm, like, What? So yeah, th- then like the next day she came out with an apology and it was like, she just typed it on Instagram and I was just like, I obviously like don't, it was obviously a joke. Like I'm part of the LGBTQ community. Like, I'm sorry for anyone I offended or something like that. And it's like, whatever. I, it's not an excuse that you're a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Exactly. Like, you're obviously invalidating that portion of yourself in yep. favor of heteronormative dick. Apps for that. It's like, so, the, anyway. oh, that hurts me because like you hear about, it's like the, the worst like biphobic like things where people are like worried, you know, like you have lesbians that are worried that like bi women aren't really thinking of them like as true, like not really thinking of them as a valid option, like just yeah. for sex or just to spice things up or like yeah. anything else. And it, it's obviously there because it happens, yes, but like it's it still- happen. Yeah, it does happen. And like, it does suck that there are those people out there because there are just so many like stereotypes with bi people. I feel so bad, to be honest, like for people who are truly yeah. like bi and stuff like that yeah. um, because of those things. But like, it just, inv- it validates that stuff. And I hadn't, and I don't have that view. I've never had that view, but like, I did have an experience with a bi person that was like, I'll, I'll fuck girls, but I'll never date them. I've heard that too. I've heard that that yeah. happening. I, yeah. She and, fucking yeah. said that straight to my face. And I wasn't like looking to date her. So I didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? But like in right. hindsight, I was like, I would not have, I would not have had sex with her. Now, if someone no said that not. to me, I would have, I mean, unless I'm, I don't know. I There's always exceptions. It depends. <laughs> 
you could always yeah make an exception but <laughs> it's still <laughs> i can do a little hate fucking you know sure especially knowing that now but yeah i think it still promotes like very negative whatever because i myself am like i'm pretty fluid like i wouldn't write off really any gender specifically like straight men are difficult for me to ever fathom ever being with again but I am more fluid and so it's like I've had that thought of like I don't want that to be invalidating because the lesbian community can be pretty closed off in that sense because of these stereotypes like I get it I get where they're coming from but I mean there is always kernels of truth to everything but like it Mm -hmm. it really does hurt like those people that those stereotypes are and like it's just like the few that ruin it for the rest of them you know what I mean and it never ruined it for me like it never fucked me over I'm like oh my god I never you know it was never that but like it was one of those things that like at the time I had not had a lot of experience with women so when she said that to me I was like but she said I was pretty (laughs) but she said I was pretty you know you're like like, so it matters yeah (laughs) you know she's like I never date a woman who's like but you you, you but you like want to you want to kiss me yeah <laughs> yeah that's hard it's just that's funny. the challenge yeah you've been you have been posting tiktoks lately about like dudes and shit which i think is funny like would you say not cis men but like you know gender fluid trans men bi men like men in the community 100 percent. yeah yeah mm-hmm. cool yeah. i thought about and it I've- Yeah, I've always kind of felt that way, honestly. But again, it's like the labels kind of like I tried them on and whatever. And like lesbian still resonates with me. You know, I'm cool with it. But I feel like I am open to like pansexual, I guess, like makes the most sense. But I don't really love that phrase. I don't really, it doesn't really fit me. Um, But like, I, I see myself like if it works, it works. It doesn't really like, I'm not like repulsed by pipe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you seriously called it pipe <laughs> the fuck that's all folks oh my god i swear i was at a place where i was like oh there's still a small percentage that like i would sleep with a man and then i really like went into it and i was like okay well cis men completely out like never happened yeah cis always... men are so difficult there's yeah. yeah but then i was like thinking about bi men because i like think that bi men are attractive or like mm-hmm. effeminate men, you know, like everyone's obsessed with Harry Styles and Timothy Shalagu. And I'm like, I think they're awesome. And I love looking at them and I love watching them on screen and I love watching them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like thought about it. I'm like, okay, like I've thought about being with trans men. I've thought about being with bi men. I've thought about like that. And like, mm-hmm. even then, like, I'm like, okay, well, like it would be better, but I still would like, when I think about it, I still, it's like, it's just not cause you're still men. Like it's yeah. still men, but I really tried. I was <laughs> at a point in my time of like, still like um, hating myself. I was like, I could still, fi- I could still figure it out. I could still make it work. You know, like I could still do yeah. it. Like it would be better. It would be better. Yeah. And like now yeah. I'm like, okay, I just think I want like want to be aspects of them, but I, I still don't think I could ever be with any man, regardless if they're in the community or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot for for me, like, there's a big difference between, like, sexual attraction and, like, romantic attraction. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes those lines, like, get a little blurred or get a little crossed or it it works with one person in the sexual aspect, but then in the romantic aspect, it doesn't and vice versa. So um, that's kind of why, like, I'm pretty open to, like, various genders. Like, I don't want to close it off to anything, but I do have my preferences. Yeah. For sure. (laughs) I think it's really interesting. It just kind of opened my brain up. Like if I wasn't, let's say if I was like asexual or like something along those lines where I was like romantic or something like that, I could totally see myself being in a relationship with a bi man, any type of man in the community. We're still excluding cis people. Yes. And I feel the same. I feel the same way. I could, I could, if it was non-sexual, but it was Mm -hmm. like friendship, but it was like romantic friendship. I could totally I could totally do it. I think it just when it comes down to sexual chemistry, it's mind blowing. (laughs) Yeah, no, like I feel like my acapella group in college like enlightened me to like all of this because I had so many queer male friends or like they were somewhat on on the scale. Um, And so it was like, oh my goodness, like these relationships can be kind of like physically close and kind of romantic in a way, but it's still like very much a friendship, but 
I think that's also kind of crossing the line into talking about like how platonic friendships can still be like romanticized and and touchy Mm -hmm. and feely and those things that are usually like frowned upon yeah but yeah I just feel like within the community it's very helpful to feel like understood and you're not really promoting those like violent gender norms you know when you're with somebody that's within the the community it's usually a little bit easier but again they always pop up I think it is about like feeling heard and seen and stuff like Mm -hmm. that I feel like if it's not in a sexual way but it's more intense than like any typical friendship you know and I'm not talking about like I think it's so different like I have like long friendships like 10 15 years like they're basically family and that's not even romantic but I'm I love them I have a familial love for them but like a romantic friendship is like completely different Mm -hmm. it's so interesting that they can all be so nuanced you know like yeah it's and it it is funny because like I have like a long-term friend and like we're not as close as we used to be but like he's a guy totally platonic like it's you know it's it's never been that way it'll never be that way but it always had some sort of romantic component to it you know that was past what a normal guy girl relationship was but like we grew up together like he's basically like the closest thing that I have to like a kind of like a brother type of relationship you know sure but we had carried on for a long time like almost like a married couple like people would would be like you guys are argue like you're a married couple you know what I mean like we always kiss each other's foreheads like we're always like that kind of thing you know like we'll always cuddle and stuff like that and it's but it's so platonic like there's no feelings of 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 sexual or anything um and it's always been like that and like no one's ever said anything or made fun of or or made it weird but like I did go to a we went to a reunion for a high school reunion and like we like we're you know together whatever like arms around each other, but not like ever holding hands. Like we never held hands or anything, but, but people fucking talk. And they were like, Oh, like, yeah, you know, Brie and JT are together. We're like, that's like so far from the truth at yeah. all whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, it's just never like that. But like, you know, conservative small town, like people fucking just think that you can't have those type of friendships, but like, it is funny you yeah. saying that. Cause I'm like, that was totally a romantic friendship for sure. For like, yeah. many years. And it was yeah. awesome. And- and romantic doesn't have to equate to like you guys are in a relationship and I think like the li- the lines can be blurred and I think like again I can thank my acapella group for this because we were all queer as fuck and we all were okay with kind of blurring those lines where like we would touch and, and cuddle and sometimes like kiss each other or whatever and it was like normal yeah and from like an outside perspective it wasn't and like maybe it was a little bit more than usual but at the same time, it's like you can you can show love in so many different ways, and it oh, and yeah. it doesn't mean that it has to be like categorized as something, or it doesn't mean it's like okay now you're dating or whatever. It's like you can show your love and appreciation for people in like many different forms, and yeah. it doesn't have to be like categorized necessarily. That sounds so gay. Like when you were like, oh yeah, when I was gay. in my acapella group, and I was like, that's the gayest shit I've ever heard. That's the gay shit I've heard all week. Literally, it's, it was the gayest shit I've ever experienced. <laughs> I missed out. I missed out on the theater and the band kids. Like, I wasn't banned until, like, eighth grade, but I never was in the sexually active, like, band geeks in high school because I quit. So I never got that. I was – I'm so mad. I wish I would have, like, been in more plays and, like, been in that, but – I, this is I didn't have that a college. experience. Yeah. This is definitely a college thing, a high school meeting. Oh, okay. Not in, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I got cooler in college, which was also not true, but um, <laughs> it was definitely a college thing. <laughs> okay, okay. I do think it is funny, though, too, like, with my best guy friend, like, we were both extremely avoidant as well. So I feel like it was, like, the only type of, like, romantic relationship where we were, like, we actually, like, were emotionally intimate. But yeah. it was never anything full on because it was just a romantic friendship. I don't even think he I don't know if he would even consider it a romantic friendship, but I think I do now. Um, yeah. But I think it was like the closest thing that we had to anything real because neither one of us like we're, we're so avoidant. It's so funny. Yeah. You're like this doesn't have to mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really, yeah. it's really funny, but. I resonate with that. Oh my God. That's crazy. All right, y'all. So this is the part of the podcast where we try to answer your questions on life, love, happiness, etc. that we probably have no business trying to answer. 
All right. This is from Anonymous. They're 27. They're from Missouri and they write, hi, Queer Talk fam. Um, so right now I'm having a little bit of a struggle with an issue. I have um, been out as uh, pansexual for about two years now. Um, and I'm now kind of coming to terms with the fact that I don't feel exclusively like a female. I don't really know where I'm at in the process, but I am a little worried of having to come out yet again. It's taking me so long to be okay with my sexual orientation and to be able to come out and tell everybody. Now I feel like some sort of imposter syndrome you know, if I decide to come out as non-binary. How do you guys deal with having to come out twice? I feel like this kind of came up during this podcast, actually. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I resonate with this very deeply. I think there's so much shame that comes with trying on a label and it working for a little bit for you. And then you kind of educate yourself more, you have more life experience, and then something else fits better. And that is so like stigmatized when that happens, but it's also so normal. Like I think about, and the thing that helps me actually, like nowadays I think about it more, but when I think about trans people who pre-transition, they come out as gay. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time they're, they're, they come out as gay and then they come out again and they, you know, they say that they're transitioning. And I think about like Gigi Gorgeous, how she came out as gay and mm -hmm. then she transitioned and now she, then she came out of lesbian. And these things are a journey for a reason. Like we, mm -hmm. we try things on and they fit for that season of your life. And then you explore more and you figure more things out and there's no shame in that. Um, especially because I think sexuality exploration goes very much hand in hand with gender exploration. Yeah, I feel so. like it's just like once you knock down the dot, like once you knock down one domino, like it, it just, yep. it's a train. It doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, so you might have some other things. You might not. It might be the only yeah. fucking domino, but totally. you won't know until you knock down the first one. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I would say, yeah. Like, I feel like it's so similar to like some, some things say like not everything stays in fashion. Like you change no. your look, you change like so many things about people change, right? You change your views as you age, your actual physical appearance ages. Like there's so many things that change that are like so normal, like change, like seasons in, mm -hmm. in, in nature. So like change is such a part of people. And so I feel like it is hard though, being in the community and like having such a hard time just identifying or choosing not to, and then like showing people and then feeling like you have to stick to it. Like cause people don't believe you or you'll be invalidated right. if you, if you switch. So I feel like there is yep. some type of burden, which I find so interesting because logically everything changes. Like we're all in perpetual states of change. Yep. Um, because yep. you know, it, life's a simulation. So like you can do what you want. It is indeed. It is indeed. I, I second all of that 100%. I think it, it often the fear is that you're going to be invalidated because it seems like you're wishy-washy or you're changing your mind or whatever. I, I went through that as well. Um, and that doesn't invalidate anything that you're, you're feeling. Like yeah. it is their seasons for a reason. And, and again, I think that once one door is open with like, ex you know, exploring your sexuality and you're getting more comfortable with that and you're getting more comfortable with how you're dressing and how you're acting in society and how you're looking at yourself in the mirror, it's going to open up other windows to like, okay, but how do I feel about myself in a gendered way? And what is that like on a spectrum? And how do I feel about my womanhood or my, my manhood or any of those things in between? Like it totally makes sense. Yep. And I think it's, I think it's hard. Cause like people do feel like a sense of like, they need to know because like, I, there's so many negative connotations that can go with coming out and like what it means and what it means to be gay and things like that. So like, if you're going to say you're gay, like you better be fucking gay or you, you better be bi, you better be this. If you're going to put yourself on blast like yeah. that, you better know your shit. And I feel like it, the root of it is just all of the negative connotations surrounding it, that it's going to take a while to destigmatize. But I feel like once that happens, 100%. You know, that doesn't, that's not going to help you in the present moment, you know, like it would be easier to be able to just change and be, and be fluid and be what you want. Cause you won't have all of those stigmatations, but yeah, like Jay said, you know, 
it suits you for the time being. So whatever you choose suits you for the time being. And that's okay. It's valid. It's also valid to change it. And I think like for this scenario, but also in general, like that, like labels might work for some people, uh, but you don't have to feel like you have to hold tight to anything permanently because those mm-hmm. things change as well. And they might actually like be hindering you more than helping you at a certain point. So don't feel like you have to like completely find a label that you have to permanently stick on yourself and that's it and you can't budge because that's just not how life works. If you were a choker in 2015, you don't have to still fucking wear it. <laughs> Things change. <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I've I was really there. into chokers. I swear to God, my roommate for my birthday got cute. me like a pack of 10, like 10 different types of like black chokers, like all different kinds. And I was obsessed with them. Like I, I used them to be so into them. <laughs> I like the way you make my net look. It makes my net look like really you, like long. Skinny. <laughs> makes it look good. Yeah, I was into it. But yeah, I mean, you did fashion. see that. I guess you saw that story that I had posted when I had it on. Um, and I asked I did. people. I yeah. did. Fashionista. Back in the day when I still wore dresses and shit. I just thought about, I was like, damn, if I ever want to play dress up like for fun to like be feminine wear dresses, I don't have any. Like maybe I should get some like dress up dresses. <laughs> I know. I thought about that recently actually, because I do have like, I've, I've kind of come into a season of like, I kind of want to like mess around with that stuff. And I think I got rid of like all of that stuff because it does come in waves for me. So like, I think I got rid of everything possible that was like more feminine but uh, yeah I would totally mess around with that stuff Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to like revisit that (laughs) if I see like a dress at like a thrift store then I'll pick one up but I like won't spend money on it because if it's just for fun like I'd never wear it out you know what I mean but like I think you're just watching the yeah that's kind of how I feel too like those are hot dresses like I kind of want to wear one and listen to Lana Del Rey you know with a glass of wine like like, sip on some red wine (laughs) yeah you know I got my red dress on tonight just go out into the moon I used to have this thought of wearing a red dress and like walking toward the moon on like a dock like a Gatsby dock yes a full yes a full movie moment Mm -hmm. I really thought about it yeah see we all like to play around a little bit we all like to do it of course it's all about experimenting but uh cool well we'll go to the lightning round um so do you want to answer some questions really fast let's do it cake or cookies cookies for Beanies sure or snapbacks <laughs> you're like i have to choose oh um okay i actually don't wear snapbacks like i just like like baseball hats but i like to wear them backwards so does that count yeah just like yeah the hats okay. backwards janelle monet or girl in red janelle monet for sure Ooh, okay uh tegan and sarah or Haley kyoko Haley kyoko okay kaylani or king princess <gasps> oh, okay, Kehlani <laughs> to be with romantically, but then King Princess to listen to. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I would agree with that. Um, yeah. I would do the same. Uh, shocker. Uh, jean jacket or yeah. flannels? Jean jacket. Giving presents or getting presents? I'm so bad at giving presents. I will be honest with you. Like, my best friend just gave me, like, a beautiful <laughs> giant basket of like goodness for Christmas to me and I didn't know what to do for her gift like Aww. it might have so bad so I guess I'm better at receiving them okay but I like to give okay cool are you the gay that squishes the bugs yes 100 percent. nice toilet paper do you roll it under or over like over I don't know that- I'm not I'm not the one who's gonna tell you if it's right or wrong yeah over I mean, it's wrong, but it's fine. Okay, Um, all right. Favorite queer movie of all time? Okay, this is only because it's like very um, erotic. So I would call it more of a porno than a movie. Okay, that's fine. But below her mouth. (laughs) It is more of a porno. I don't feel like it's actually like artistically a good movie, but like, wow, the sex scenes are fire. So fire. But also I have a side note. The half of it, have you seen that movie? That was really cute. I have not. I, tried I think that's to what get it's in, called. I tried to get into it and I like stopped watching it, which was really weird for a queer movie for me Aww. to like not watch all the way through. But I, I cried. Oh, that was good. Oh, maybe I'll watch it now. 
<laughs> you should. It got me in my field. Okay. <laughs> it was in high school. I like high school like setting movies for some reason. So it like made me all feely. I think high school movies are nostalgic, but they can also be triggering depending on like they how are. your high school was. Agreed. So, or both. Agreed. Um, I think it's a bitter bittersweet. I never really romanticized high school. Like, not that I had, I had a good high school experience, I feel like. Like, it had ups and downs. Like, it wasn't, like, terrible, but it wasn't, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad it wasn't amazing. Like, the people who think fucking high school is amazing are, like, bald and fat or, like, you know, got married right out of high school or, like, fucking, I don't know. So yes, just... I agree. Like, if you peaked in high school, like, there's things to kind of sift through with that. Mm, yeah. I don't want to be around you. <laughs> That's just my personal, I, I'm really, like, harsh with it. Because, like, where I came from, like, no, it's just I agree. so just the worst. Yeah, I think you're a little more, like, like rural. Yeah, I'm rural. I'm, I'm real rural. Rural. Can't do it. I used to really enjoy, like, You're, after... like, a, currently a Mr. Cornfield. Yeah, in college, I used to like coming home. And I used to like, like, going to the townie bars and seeing everyone and catching up. And now I could care fucking less. Like, I go buy it when I see my it's parents. It's a whole and it task. Just, I don't know why. And it's just, like, within the last year, like, 2020 for me, I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. I don't care how many kids you have anymore. I don't know what Billy scraped his fucking arm. I don't give a shit. I just don't. No, so. I feel that. You see the same people all the time when you go to, like, those bars, and it's also, like, do I really want to revisit all those memories that I have, like, from high school with you? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And everyone brings their own baggage to the table and has uh, their own I, I mm-hmm. like version of you that it doesn't really suit you anymore. And like now that I've like come out, it just feels weird. Like I could just not that it's like super yeah. weird. Like I've never had anything bad happen, like really nothing. And people have been like pretty supportive, but there's still some air of like, I don't know. I don't know if it's it's like a pins no, and I needles or like. What have you been up to? Like, I've seen you on social media. So they obviously know I'm gay, but they're not saying anything. So I was like, right. what, you know? And it's That's like, like the code for like, I know you're gay. <laughs> or like, I know you've like changed a lot or like, yeah. you know, it's like very interesting. Yeah. I feel like in my like hometown, like it's, it's probably not like to the extreme that you have, but I feel like it's still pretty like s- straight. Um, so like whenever I've gone to like bars, like by my, like in my hometown, like, I feel like the way that I present is always, like, so kind of, like, out of the ordinary of, like, yeah. what they're seeing there. And, like, this is yep. obviously back pre-COVID. But, like, there are so many girls that would, like, always come up to me, like, wasted being, like, oh, my God, you look like Ruby Rose. Or, like, oh, my God, you look like Kristen Stewart. And I'm, like, have you never seen, like, another gay person in your life other than those two people? <laughs> like, yeah, like, I don't know. There's just yeah, it's it's just being in a in a white suburban There's small just no town, awareness. I guess. And it's like hard no. to fault because it's like, why would they be in queer culture? Why would they be following right. and be in the culture? It's not their culture, you know? Like why would they yeah. be in it? And especially if it's not really dominant in any way, shape or form, then it's like you can't really Yeah. Blame they them. don't have a reason to be. Look, if they aren't themselves or they don't have kids or like siblings or parents mm-hmm. who are in it like they wouldn't right. fucking know and so it's like can right. you fault them and that's the thing like why we need representation so much in regular mainstream media so that people can see that without having to like actually have effort put effort into it like we need to be effortless for people to know <laughs> then yep. they might understand and it, it shouldn't always like all look the same and that's still kind of a fault that it's all very cookie cutter like oh man was married to a woman and now she's tempted and then she leaves him and then they get together and it's like that's not you just have some like Schitt's Creek did it real well because it was like this is just a normal gay relationship and they just happen to be Mm -hmm. gay and they don't really have like the struggle of like having to come out and it being horrible or like them being with a woman first or whatever like so there needs to be more of that some people do do it right it is hard because it's like coming out stories Mm -hmm. need to be told but it's like how often do they need to be told for sure are they told within the heteronormative structure it's just like it's harder when you're Mm -hmm. dealing with minority populations like that's why I didn't like happiest season because I'm like that's just like fucking toxic and it's not realistic for uh for like queer people and minority people you know what I mean like I didn't I didn't like it either yeah I get it I get that it's a normal Christmas movie they did it's normal 
like that shit happens and like you know like you bring your pe- person home to your home dumb life from the city i i understand that but it's like it's it's more problematic when it comes from that and it like i'll make the comparison to like the help like with racism like sure you're trying to help racism in the South, but it's like white people are the ones that are looking like they're the ones that are doing it. And they're the ones that are being martyrs. Yeah. And it's fucking I'm really bullshit. big on the like- It's bullshit. I think coming from like a so- social work perspective, there is a big issue with like the white savior complex and it, it shows up in many different forms. It's an ego, so. it's an ego trip. Mm-hmm. It's not telling yeah. a story like it should. No. And like- that's no. how I feel. And it just makes it even more problematic for underrepresented populations. So I feel like, yeah, like people are picky. Like the queer community is picky with that shit because like we should be. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. <laughs> we did it. Yay. Thank you so much for being on, Jay. Um, if you guys want to check out more about Jay, you can find them at Jay Jorgs on TikTok. Is it same for Instagram? I forget. Yep. Oh, J-A-E. J-A-E, yeah. J-A-E J-O-R-G-S. Okay, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe <laughs> where you're listening and check out our full video episodes on YouTube. Link is in below in the description. That's it for this episode, my queers. Uh, be you, be queer, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next episode.